You're listening to the Back Porch Talk Podcast. Danny and Jason had many discussions and debates on the back porch while making pivotal investment moves with assets. That's right, with trading cards. They welcome you to the back porch and right into those discussions about current sports news with a fresh and unique twist. So come on and join us. Welcome to the Back Porch Top Podcast. I'm your co-host, Jason. It's your co-host, Danny. Fans, whoo, free agency in the NBA is on fire. <sighs> Danny, it never fails, man. Around the 4th of July every year, NBA does not disappoint. Let's just first start off with our Milwaukee Bucks and where Bobby Portis, yes, he declined. The player option, but he re-upped and re-signed with the Milwaukee Bucks for a four-year, $49 million contract. In my opinion, this was a very salary-friendly contract for the Milwaukee Bucks. I thought Bobby Portis could could have demanded more uh, Mm -hmm. on the market. But he signs back with the Milwaukee Bucks. I think he, he has found a home. With Milwaukee Bucks, and I'll just say this, Danny, the Milwaukee Bucks organization is one of the most stable organizations in the NBA right now. Mm-hmm. With all this hoopla and all this stuff that we'll get into later on about organizational structure and culture and things of that nature, hey, you can find a good culture in the Milwaukee Bucks organization. Uh, and I think Bobby Portis found that out. Uh, and decided to stay with uh, the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, along with that, Joe Ingles comes to the Milwaukee Bucks on a one-year contract, $6.5 million. Uh, he actually suffered an ACL tear on January 30th, his last game with the Utah Jazz. Comes to Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, I think it's a, a good signing, Danny. Uh, to me, Joe Ingles talks mad trash. Talks a whole lot of trash, man. And he has a little edge to him. Mm-hmm. I think that's what Milwaukee needs. And he he's a veteran. Now, granted, yeah, he's older, but he's savvy. Yep. And he can provide some punch off the bench. What say you, Danny? First to Bobby Portis. It it was rumored that he may go to Golden State, which I thought would have been a good for, fit for him as well. So good on the Bucks by paying Bobby Portis. Uh, he's been solid for them. He's a fan favorite. And you got to run it back, man. Yep. Based on what you saw and the whole MCL with Chris Middleton, that doesn't happen. Things may be different, right? He has a home here. He has a nice role set up. And why not run it back and get paid at the same time, which he deserved. Congratulations. I wasn't really surprised on that. I thought he would come back. Joe Ingles, I saw that come through on the wire yesterday, and I think it's a great move by Milwaukee. You get a a shooter, Mm -hmm. someone who can handle the ball, and he's a person that usually destroys them when they play Utah. So (laughs) so that may uh, stop when they go to Utah. For whatever reason, they struggle. So without Joe Ingles being there, uh, that may help. But I think it's a great move. Uh, I did mention offline that I know he was he had, there were some rumblings about him where he wanted to come off, uh, wanted to start instead of coming off the bench, which mm-hmm. he served a great role in Utah and he he played his part. But I think he knows what he's getting himself into here in Milwaukee, and mm-hmm. to have him coming off the bench once he's fully healthy. And the good thing is. Uh, you may get him midseason, so he'll yep. be fresher towards the playoff run. So mm-hmm. I, that was a no-brainer, man. I I thought it was a great move, and it was a sneaky move because no one really knew uh, they were doing that. Mm-hmm. I, I agree there. And uh, along with Pat Connaughton re-upping and, and accepting his player option at $5.7 million, mm-hmm. uh, I think the Bucks are going to, like you said, they're going to run it back. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fred Nora, 
uh, was extended a qualifying offer. So uh, I believe he's coming back. Javon Carter is coming back. Yep. So the bench is, I think, is going to be solidified here with a little, little bit more pop. Uh, I don't know what that means for George Hill, quite honestly. Could be one where George Hill is no longer a buck. We'll mm-hmm. see what happens. Um, but this is going to be interesting. I, I'm really, really curious about the development of Bochamp, um, our draft pick here. I'm looking at some of the highlights uh, of this young man, I think uh, he is going to provide uh, a little slash or some more slash to the basket, um, can go above the rim. I, I think this is a good pickup here by the Milwaukee Bucks. Overall, I think it's been a successful offseason for the Milwaukee Bucks, Danny. Agree. Uh, uh, and just as the Milwaukee Bucks have been making uh, some splash here, let's go to the uh, Boston Celtics and where they have traded for Malcolm Brogdon um, to, in exchange for uh, Daniel Tice, Aaron Nesmith, and a 2023 first round pick that's going over to the uh, Indiana Pacers. We indicated earlier that the Boston Celtics needed a point guard Mm-hmm. Malcolm Brogdon, who we know, who we actually drafted, and who we let go because he couldn't stay healthy. I'm not concerned. Mm-hmm. I'm not concerned, Danny, because I still believe had we had Middleton, things would have been different in that Boston Celtics series. I believe we would have won that series in six. I still believe, even with the Celtics having Brogdon, I still believe with the players that we have, mm-hmm. oh, we can we, we can beat the Celtics. It'll be a hell of a series, but we can beat the Celtics. Uh, what say you? They needed a point guard. And to get Brogdon for what they got him for, yeah. I thought it was a steal. Yeah, I agree. So for them to not give up much as far as uh, talent, Daniel Tice is, you know, he's a steady player for them. Mm-hmm. But – you bring in a ball handler, someone who actually can play defense, hit his free throws. The only question, as always, with Brogdon is health. Yep. Now, if you can get him to, and his health stays consistent, Boston got a steal here, man. <laughs> they had uh, a true, I, true steal here. I, I agree. I think Milwaukee would still can still take them, but this improves where they needed that person to facilitate the offense because I think Marcus Smart is more he's better off the ball he's yeah, not necessarily a true point guard mm-hmm. um, versus Brogdon who's more of a point guard so I think it's a great move by Boston I think they probably still have something left to do here in free agency to fill out that bench Denny how many games are in the NBA season 82 how many games do you think Brogdon played this past season Probably, I'm going to say, I'm going to go with 30. Close. Off the dome. Close, off the dome. I'm um, looking at some things here. It looks like he played 36 games. He started 36 games, man. Mm-hmm. Who is there <laughs> with Brogdon? Uh, he just has a, his, uh, a history here. Um, mm-hmm. So we'll we'll see what happens. That's why I'm not necessarily concerned uh he, he could be healthy for that that series against the milwaukee bucks fine but mm, we'll see what happens with with that situation yeah uh danny there was some other news here <laughs> with regards to man a whole lot of teams man but i'm gonna focus in on the brooklyn nets danny and we need to have a discussion about this right here. Kyrie actually opted into his contract. Mm-hmm. So he did uh, look at what the Lakers could possibly offer. And they could only offer the, at the time, a $6.5 million uh, veterans uh, minimum. He opted into his contract, which is worth $36 million plus dollars. Uh, the remainder of the Brooklyn Nets. And the day after he had he did that, oh boy, the news that broke yesterday on June 30th in the afternoon was that Kevin Durant requested a trade. 
and he indicated that he wanted to either go to the Phoenix Suns or the Miami Heat. Bottom line, Danny, Kevin Durant is just fed up, man. He's fed up with all this drama. All he wants to do is go play some ball. Yeah, I am. Um, we need to have a discussion about this, Danny, because this says a whole lot about where the whole player empowerment. Uh, you can look at right now the Brooklyn Nets organization being just totally decimated by this news that KD mm-hmm. wants to go. And really the owner has obliged. Keep in mind, K- Kevin Durant signed his extension last year. Mm-hmm. So this would be would have been his first year in his extended contract. The start of his extended contract. And he already has opted and requested a trade. This is maddening, man. Danny, I got to ask you this, man. Is this Kyrie's fault? All this drama? And is James Harden smart? He was smart to be like, nah, I see what this, where this is going. I'm about to go ahead and dip. <laughs> I'm about to go ahead and dip out of, out of the Brooklyn Nets, man. I see where, what Kyrie doing is mm-hmm. not doing but not playing. Mm -hmm. So what say you, Danny? KD knew what he was getting himself into. He's the one. He didn't have to sign that free agent deal with with Kyrie when they, when they had that off season, he was, they were in cahoots, right? Mm -hmm. They wanted to build something big in Brooklyn. And then you go, you request, you know, James Harden is on the table, bring James Harden in. Still can't get it done. Now, like you said, Brooklyn's decimated, man. They gave up all this different draft capital to appease Kyrie and KD. And now you're in this situation. KD, okay, you go to Phoenix, right? Phoenix is going to have to give up something to get KD. And can I say this because I just saw the Rudy Gobert trade come through oh, on the wire. Man. Come on, man. And Minnesota gave up. They gave Four up. first rounders. And, and then some, and some players. And players. Starters. Come on, man. Minnesota had to give up that for Rudy Gobert. What is Brooklyn going to be asking for for KD? So KD's going to move from one situation to another. But it's not going to put them in a better position unless they fleece the team mm-hmm, to mm-hmm. put them in a chance. So the two teams he mentioned, Miami and Phoenix. I think Miami has a little more depth. But P.J. Tucker's gone now, who signed with Philadelphia yesterday. And who are they going to give up? I don't know their draft status from a draft pick perspective off the top of my head, but either way, it's going to be significant players involved. Phoenix, yeah. I think it's going to be DeAndre. It'll be a part, DeAndre Ayton will be a part of that package if they I did that. I don't know, though. I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even – I would – you just can't do it right now, man. And I I, I just don't I understand KD's frustration, but at the same time, man, you are part of the deal. And he was a, Brooklyn, Brooklyn is yep. looking, I think I mentioned this before. Brooklyn is the Los Angeles Lakers of the East. <laughs> they are. You well, have I, I, LeBron and AD, KD and Kyrie. You don't have that supporting cast to get you over the top. You're not. You're going to be seventh, eighth spot every year. I'll say this, man. Listen, if KD was looking for a culture or uh, an organization that has a culture of winning, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know what he was seeing in Brooklyn necessarily. I uh, thought maybe he was seeing maybe this is the opportunity to build a culture. I want. I don't know if I would build it with Kyrie. That's the. That's the, there. It is right there. They had and before he came there. They were winning. They were winning. Overachieving. I, I mean, I, oh. I would say this, man. Listen, we we looked at look at the coach. They had Atkins, who, like you said, were they were winning. Mm-hmm. What happens? 
to get rid of Atkins, to bring in Steve Nash, who'd never coached before. Mm -hmm. Then they talked about sitting Jared Allen. What what you gonna do that for? Jared Allen was balling. He was the one who was blocking the hell out of everybody's shots, including Giannis. Yep. Mm -hmm. So you gonna trade a rim defender like that? So they traded him to Cleveland, and what happens? He becomes an all star for the first time in his yep. career. You make these moves, man, as a as a player, and talking about player empowerment and everything. You make mm -hmm. these moves. You got to stick with the consequences, man. This is going to be detrimental for the players, man, moving mm -hmm. forward. Like all of these executives and the owners, they're looking at all of this. Let's think about it. You had Kyrie go from Cleveland to Boston, messes up Cleveland, messes up Boston. Yeah. Then he goes to Brooklyn, messes up Brooklyn. What Kyrie going to do now? The only team that wanted Kyrie for $6.5 million was the Lakers. Yeah. <laughs> that's, the only, that's the only team. So, Kyrie, you got to now play to show your worth. But then even after you play and you get a new contract, is that going to be a long-term contract? Or is this going to, just going to be year to year with, with some boundaries, with some stipulations in that contract? Some incentives in that base, yep. if, if you play, if you play fifty games, if you play sixty games, mm -hmm. it's going to be incentive incentive based. So, but owners and executives are looking at this, and the new CBA contract, they're going to be they're going to go for blood, man. Blood is in the water. Uh, so some of the other trade uh, free agent moves here, Danny. Uh, a blockbuster one that happened not too long ago. Uh, Rudy Gobert traded from the Utah Jazz, man. Traded from the Utah Jazz going to the Minnesota Timberwolves. And the Timberwolves gave up Malik Beasley, Patrick Beverly, Walker Kessler, uh, Jared Vanderbilt, and Leandra Balmoral. And <laughs> they're also going to get some first round picks from the 2023, 25, and 27 draft and a top five protected pick in 2029. 20, Danny. Danny Ainge is over there in Utah right now. And he's making a statement. <laughs> I, I guess from a youth from a Minnesota perspective, you put Rudy at the five, Carl Anthony Towns at the four. Mm -hmm. uh, and you just let them go at it, man. Um, this is an interesting, bold move. Um, very much so, in my opinion. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns, he re-upped and signed a Supermax deal. Uh, so he's going to be there for a minute. So, Danny, what, what do you think about this deal? I just think Minnesota, Minnesota gave up way too much. You knew Utah wanted to trade Rudy Gobert anyway. Like, they, they had showed their hand. They didn't want yeah. – it was either him or Donovan Mitchell, right? Mm -hmm. You knew one of them was going. Mm -hmm. So, if I'm looking from Minnesota's perspective, and you give up those first-round picks, and you give up Pat Bev, who gave you that, that fight and that veteran that grit, leadership yeah. that you needed, because mm -hmm. he's the one that was key for them this year to get them where they – to make them move up and get in the playoffs and actually uh, come close to advancing in the playoffs. So to lose him and Vanderbilt started for him, and Malik Be Beasley was a great bench player for them, a great yep, three-point shooter. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, I, I don't know. I I guess I have to see how they uh, – how this pans out in the end, but right – as, as Current time since we just got this news recently, I'm shocked. I I couldn't believe how much they gave up for him. Not only that, Danny, but Carl again, like I mentioned, Carl Anthony Towns uh, agreed to a four year, two hundred twenty four million dollars super max extension, which is going to bring his contract value to six years and two hundred and ninety five million dollars. Oh uh, man. Uh, uh, I'll put it like this. I think wow. what we're seeing in the, NBA, in the NBA is that 
we're we're seeing these franchises not necessarily valuing these first round picks as much any longer. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, and keep in mind, they're every other year too. Yep. Uh, there's a rule in the NBA where you can't give up uh, consecutive first round picks uh, in a trade and everything. But nonetheless, I think, uh, well, I don't think I know what we're seeing in the NBA is you can give up your first round picks and then you know what? You can go ahead and pay a little money to get mm-hmm. back into the late r- first round. Uh, yep. I've seen Golden State do that several times over. They're notorious uh, so for that. They're notorious for that, man. I mean, yep. these first round picks. And, and here's the other thing, too. If you're successful successful, and you're winning, you're going to be in the 25 through 30 range uh, in, a, in a draft anyway. Yeah. So pay a little money, get back into the draft, call it a day. So I think that's one, uh, you know, part of the strategy uh, with all this as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what does this do for Minnesota, man? I think Minnesota is – they're trying to go for it, man. They're trying to go for it. They yep. had a sniff of the playoffs, uh, some of the success, some questionable coaching. I think they have learned from it, and I think they're going to, in a sense, kind of move forward uh, and all. So uh, we'll see what happens with that, Danny. We also, man, this a whole lot has happened, Danny. I mean, John Morant uh, agreed to a four-year uh, designated rookie extension uh, worth up to, like, $226 million, man. These cats getting paid, man. Yes, they are. Um, but just some interesting moves. Uh, JaVale McGee going to the Dallas Mavericks. That's going to be an interesting, interesting move here. Brunson has gone from the Mavericks to the New York Knicks. I'm mm-hmm. curious to see what's going to happen with the Dallas Mavericks. And Danny, just real quickly, lastly, about the Atlanta Hawks, man, they're making some moves. The John mm-hmm. Murray getting traded from the San Antonio Spurs to the Hawks. Man, this is interesting. Um, they've also, man, they've, they've made some moves. But what do you think about the DeJounte Murray uh, trade? And then before you get into that, the Hawks also traded Kevin Horder, who to the Sacramento Kings for Justin Holiday and Maurice Harkless and a future first round pick. Horder, man, he can shoot lights out. And Sacramento is doing something over there. We'll touch base on that in, in our next podcast. But what do you think about the Atlanta Hawks? That DeJounte Murray move was a man for what they gave up for him. That was a that was a no brainer. Yeah, and yep. you bring in an all star to that roster. Now they picked up some steam at the end of the season last year, so I'm curious to see how if they're if they're done, if they're going to stand pat with what they have, or if they have one more move left in them. But the move I think is a great move for them to get them back to where uh, they were two years ago when they made that run to the Eastern Conference Finals, to add him to, with Trey Young in the backcourt. Mm-hmm. I, I am nice. eagerly anticipating watching those games. That's going to be nice. And one, one other thing here, too, about the Boston Celtics, they, um, it, look, it looks like they're going to get Danilo Gallinari. So Boston making some moves. Nice pickup for the bench. That's a nice pickup. Uh, like I said, I think the Bucks and you know Gallinari always does something against the Bucks, man. <laughs> so this is going to be interesting to see how this play is out, man, uh, against the Bucks and, and Celtics. But yep. the Hawks have made some moves. 76ers are making moves and getting PJ Tucker. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll, we'll see what else that the 76ers do. One last team, I think. The Los Angeles Lakers. Something, something's gonna happen. I don't know what they're gonna do. Come on, whatever. Man. Uh, they signed Damian Williams mm-hmm. yesterday, but they can't stand pat with that team they had rolling into the season last year. No. no. So something due to happen. I don't know what, but they've been very quiet. So let's watch and see if they make any significant moves over the next week or so. You think they try to try to get Kyrie, get Westbrook out of there? Maybe, maybe a trade there. I can see that. 
I could definitely see that. And that may have been why Kyrie opted in to help with the money situation for them. But because I knew dang well Kyrie wasn't going to take a mid-level exception Mm-mm. for $6 million when you can make 37 oh, <laughs> That man. would made no sense. Um, but we'll see, man. Darvin Ham has said glowing things about Russell, Russell Westbrook. think that something's going to happen with them. So just because it's just been so quiet with them. Yep. And usually they have some type of buzz. And Kyrie's the buzz, but who knows if they can swing that deal. But now with KD going, what he's doing, they may do it. Fans, tell us what you think. It's a whole lot that's been happening, a whole lot of news, a lot more signings, trades, and things that we did not talk about that we will talk about in our next podcast. I'm pretty certain – there's going to be some more that happens in between our podcast, but listen, give us your thoughts, opinions on this wild free agency of 2022 in the NBA. Thank you for joining us at that porch talk podcast. You can also join us on Twitter by tweeting us at back underscore podcast. For more information, you can go to our website, which is backporchtalkpodcast.com. You can also email us at backporchtalkpodcast at gmail.com. Again, thank you for joining us. And remember that there's enough hate in the world. So go ahead and spread a little love.